Sniff. Bark. Bork. Bork. Heck. Borf. Bark. Bjork. Bark. Boo. Brent. Bork. Hey everyone, welcome back to another edition of Warhammer 40k, a universe so dark that the furries became space vikings! Last time we talked about the Death Watch, the elite alien hunters of the Imperium. Now we are covering the last space marine chapter, the Space Wolves. The strangest space marine chapter out of all of them, but still one of the most fun to run. Let's get into the fluff. Alright, so here's what's gonna happen. You walk through this archway, uh -huh. a squid will scream at you. What? If you get a boner, we're killing you. The Space Wolf's history, like many chapters, can trace their origins all the way back to the Great Crusade. Being one of the original 20 legions, the Space Wolves would be nearly unrecognizable during the early days of the Crusade. The Sixth Legion, as they were called, was filled with berserkers and barbarians, set loose on the Imperium's enemies like a pack of rabid animals. Their methods of war were so horrifying and dishonorable that the Crusade's high command wanted the Legion disbanded, comparing them to the well-disciplined Warhounds Legion, which they posed as the standard of what a Legion should be. However, luckily for the Sixth Legion, their Primarch was found before they could be disbanded. Lehman Russ, the second Primarch found, was on the death world of Fenris, a planet where during the summer, it's an active volcano hellscape, while during winter, it is a planet-wide ice age. Lehman would not only survive here, but thrive, first being raised by a pack of wolves, then being adopted by a village of humans. Lehman Russ would become the king of Fenris by the time the crusade arrived on the planet. The Emperor, hearing about the fabled King of Rus, disguised himself as a lowly man, wanting to see what his son was like. During a grand party celebrating another victory for Rus, the disguised Emperor challenged Lehman Rus to three competitions, eating, drinking, and brawling. And though the Emperor lost at eating and drinking, one blow from his power fist was enough to knock Lehman off his feet. When Lehman woke up three days later, his only reaction was to laugh. He admitted defeat and bowed his head to the Emperor, who had now revealed himself to Russ. Russ was then given command of the Sixth Legion, which he would slowly change the Legion over time, wanting them to keep their wild and rebellious nature, but have the discipline and training to know when to stop and show mercy. The now newly dubbed Space Wolves Legion would become a legion of savage discipline over time and be utterly loyal to the Emperor of Mankind, which would come to bite them in the ass during the events of the Horus Heresy. Before the Heresy began, Magnus the Red, Primarch of the Thousand Sons, would try to warn the Emperor of Horus's incoming betrayal, only for everything to go wrong. The message was lost, and everyone believed Magnus was the traitor. Horus, using this to his advantage, would trick Lehman Russ and the Space Wolves into wiping out the Thousand Sons. And sadly, they would succeed. However, as Lehman would fight Magnus, the Thousand Sons Primarch would show Horus' treachery to Lehman through his psychic powers. And though Lehman would destroy Magnus' physical form, the Space Wolves would be away from Terra for most of the heresy, as events would lead them all over the galaxy. And a lot of spoilers that I can't get into here. During the final battle of Terra, the Space Wolves, Dark Angels, and Ultramarines would be too late to help, and although the Imperium would be victorious in the end, the Emperor was mortally wounded and the Imperium was devastated by the Civil War. This led to the events where the legions that stayed loyal hunted down the traitor legions and those who sided with Horus, seeking retribution and revenge. During this time, known as the Scouring, Lehman Russ and the Space Wolves would celebrate a great victory, but during the feast, Lehman would have a vision and leave, taking the 13th company with him and disappearing, leaving the Space Wolves with no idea what happened to him. The Space Wolves of modern 40k are a wild and independent Space Marine chapter. They do not fight for the Imperium as an institution, but for its people and the Emperor independently. Though they have their own shames and problems that they will keep well hidden, they will always come to the aid of the people 
even during these darker times. Let's get into the army. Just shove the Canis Helix into my face and throw me out into the wilderness now, please and thank you. Oh, Father Willing! Space Wolves are a variant of Space Marines, so of course they get access to the Oath of Moment ability that Codex Space Marine uses. Though, once they get their Codex, they will get their own unique army rule. The Space Wolves are a rapid assault force. They focus on overwhelming their opponents with devastating shock assaults and numbers, being one of the few Space Marine armies that could run swarms of infantry. Speaking of, let's get into your units. <laughs> Space Wolves get access to all of Primaris Marine types, but they also get access to two unique main infantry squads, the Blood Claws and Grey Hunters. Blood Claws are a swarm melee unit where they get to add one of their attacks and strength when they charge into an enemy unit. While Grey Hunters are a more flexible unit, being able to take chain swords along with ranged weaponry. These two units give your Space Wolves much more interesting and flexible options compared to other chapters. This is complete Onga Bonga mode. Guess what? You guys also get access to Terminators and your own version of Sternguard Marines, called Wolfguard Terminators and Wolfguard respectively. Both units are highly customizable, being able to take ranged weapons along with their melee, though they clearly want to get stuck into melee as much as possible, as they can ignore negative modifiers in melee. This is also why they are the best units to put your Warlord and other character units in. Hell, basic Wolfgar get to add one to hit if a character is leading them. There is little downside to taking them, is basically what I'm telling you. Do you smell it? That smell. A kind of smelly smell. A smelly smell that smells. Smelly. My god! An army whose themes is wolves! HAS WOLVES! The Space Wolves have their regular Fenrisian Wolves, a cheap swarm unit that can be good for bogging down infantry. Though, the bread and butter of the army is the Thunder Wolf Cavalry, a fast and tough unit that wants to tear apart infantry. Though, they have seen a bit of a nerf, thanks to the Index rules, they lost their options for different melee weapons, but they can still be a scary unit to put on the board. There is also a special unique unit called Wolfen. Wolfen are the Death Company equivalent unit for Space Wolves, being a unit of heavily mutated Space Wolves. Though they are a scary anti-elite unit that, when their models are killed, they get to fight on death on a roll of four or higher, they are fun. But they lack the speed of the Thunderwolf cavalry and need transports to get them to where you want them to be. Don't get too cocky, Star Fox. Space Wolves, like Blood Angels, get their own unique Dreadnoughts one regular unit, and two special named character dreadnoughts. The venerable dreadnought can be equipped with any of the normal dreadnought weapons, but it gets the sole privilege in Space Wolves of being able to take a storm shield and axe, making them a terrifyingly tough melee unit who can sweep away infantry and smash most armored units. Though there are two named dreadnoughts that we have to talk about, Murder Fang and Bjorn the Fell Handed. Murder Fang is a pure melee dreadnought and is one of the strongest melee dreadnoughts in the game. Though there isn't much else to say about him. He wants to get into melee and he can pretty easily handle most units in game. Bjorn is the true star of dreadnoughts. The old boy can make a stratagem your opponent uses one command point more expensive and he's a pretty scary and tough dreadnought both in ranged and melee combat as well. He's also a fun choice to take in a Space Wolves army. Oh, they're going to have to glue you back together in hell! Though we don't have Lehman Russ back yet, we do have the Space Wolves chapter master, Logan Grimnar, and he comes in two variants. Either he is just walking, or he is riding on Storm Rider. Ability-wise, there is no difference between them, but if you're taking Storm Rider, you can have him join a Thunderwolf Cavalry unit, and he gets extra attacks in melee combat. If you take him walking, he can join Wolfguard Terminators and deep strike with them into the heart of your opponent's army. He is an impressive hero to bring if you want to have the High King of Fenris leading your army. No way! I don't believe it! And that's the Space Wolves. 
Though a few of their units are just rebranded versions of regular Space Marine Codex units, they have a unique look and playstyle and bring a uniqueness to Space Marines. Yeah, sure, they are Space Marines at the end of the day, and there are a million of those armies running around, but Space Wolves are an army that rewards you for knowing Space Marines fairly well and giving you some of the best anti-infantry melee units that Space Marines can field. Huh. There isn't any other army left to cover. Oh. Thank you all so much for joining me on this journey. It's been great, going through all the 40k armies and helping people learn the armies they are interested in. I do plan on redoing this series, however, once all the codexes are out. But for now, we are done with Warhammer 40k, though my Discord did vote on a new series. Warhammer Army Guide! Horus Heresy. So until next time, friends, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.